Child, listen, I got my Cajun shrimp. I got my Cajun whitey. I got my Spanish rice. I'm ready to eat and get into some mess and laugh. Because, child, between every content creator on YouTube, everybody posting on Twitter, every TikTok, I say, everybody get on my goddamn nerves. Let's laugh. Let's talk about it. want people to have fun let's kick back let's get into a little tea let's not get too crazy but let's enjoy the sip clock that tea but let's get to the chi chi the kiki the the internet bull <laughs> oh look at me i ain't even got the screen pulled up child let me let me go ahead and pull it up what is going on Okay, child, wait till I get back on camera. It's gonna be cute. What's going on, girl? Start it over. Start it over. We're here before Adam and Eve, right? Unless it's your belief that brothers and sisters made it to populate the entire globe. Because obviously, if Adam and Eve were the only people, then right. their children would have to make babies with their other children. I'm not going to hold you. I never thought... Let me go ahead and bookmark that. I never thought about this. Well, I mean, I've thought about this shit before. And it's always perplexed me because I'm like, Adam and Eve, then that must mean we all related. Because, hello, they having kids that have kids that have kids. So everybody retired. I'm sorry. Everybody, everybody the R word. Children? That doesn't work for many reasons. But for the commonsensical one, Empirical evidence points to the fact that incest creates developmental issues for the babies born of incest. And the less known but easily as substantial... Now, we all autistic. ...proof that it wasn't just Adam and Eve. is the fact that after Cain kills his brother Abel and is banished from the garden, he tells God that he's afraid that somebody else is going to kill him. And God tells him that anybody that attempts to kill Cain will be cursed seven times what Cain is cursed for killing his brother Abel. So if it's just Cain, Adam, and Eve, and Cain has been banished from the garden and only his parents, Adam and Eve, are left, who is he afraid of at all? Because most Christians have been deceived into believing that the canonical texts are the whole truth and nothing but the truth, many never go seeking answers outside of the Bible. But in the book of Enoch, our questions are even further substantiated by the fact that the fallen angels only come to earth to mate with human women. What women would there be to mate with if Eve hasn't even been created yet? Remember, Lucifer is disguised as a serpent in the garden. Okay, girl, you get a little too deep for me. Three. Not in the way so I So like. we can all agree that we are... Wait, is this her again? Girl. <laughs> girl. Our ancestors, right? And just to be clear, not in some like arbitrary, ambiguous way. No, we are literally our ancestors. Just to be clear, we inherit our ancestors' DNA, their traits, and their genetic information, therefore making us direct biological continuation. Okay, girl, you losing me. You losing me. Now, come on, Luke. We so we can all agree yeah, not, that we are. Because I get what she's trying to do, but she's right? losing me. Now, come on, Luke. We know you mad because you ain't weird, but bitch, you couldn't even say goodnight. That you couldn't say thank you, good night, fuck y'all, <laughs> see you later. You talking about you talk to us tomorrow? Bitch, it is. Today is tomorrow. That nigga found out at 11 59 and 59 seconds, bitch. You should have got to send it smoke signals, blinking twice for help, bitch. So, come on, nah. And then you wonder why you ain't win. See, we already knew you was too motherfucking emotional, Kamala. You going off on the motherfuckers at your goddamn campaign, bitch. If you can't run your campaign. Girl, listen to everybody that's like, why Kamala ain't listen. Kamala know what's up. I keep telling y'all, these elections are a shit show for y'all. For y'all. For America. Just so y'all can think y'all got an ounce of power and you don't. The government is one side. 
<laughs> y'all yelling out red, blue, Democrat. Da, da. It don't matter, bitch. It does not matter. And I'll be glad when motherfuckers start realizing that it does not matter. It's one side. They might give a few things here, take some away here. It's the illusion of power. When are y'all going to fucking get that? But Kamala know what's up. Come on now. She know what's up. I keep telling y'all, these elites and these celebrities and they have astrologers and whatnot on their team and they, they be knowing what's up. She know what's up. So if she seemed like she a little too calm, it's for reason. And also too, at the same time, if she go off, then they're going to say that she an angry black Seeing woman. things from the corner Definitely of your eye meaning. From the corner of your eye. But when you looked, you didn't see anything. But first, my name is Sade. I speak about all things spiritual. If you're into that type of thing, go ahead, give me a follow. Now, I'm not going to do a list on this video here. I just want to talk about it. But not on you, girl. Uh-uh. Because she, mm-mm. We not doing no spooky shit. I hate when we get the spooky. Um, not my lights flickering. <laughs> right. Uh uh. We not doing it with the spooky video. Yeah. What the fuck is that? My ex is a lawyer, and he. Girl, everybody in these mac and cheese. That was good. Everybody trying to come with this mac and cheese to, to prove that they can outcook that white girl. Like, leave that white girl alone. Y'all just don't like that she white. Even on that do look good. Let me go ahead and bookmark that. Even though I don't eat baked macaroni and cheese. Quickly, you look at me. What race do you think I am? Quickly, quickly, hurry. What do you think I am? Latino. Explain to me why you think I am that race. Because you look at it. However, I don't know. Whatever. Why? What about me makes me look not black? Everything. I've got many things. So I'm intrigued. I know what majority y'all are probably thinking. Latina. Okay. I get it a lot, but I'm intrigued. I've gotten many things, and I'm just intrigued as no, to just like Tina. what about me makes me not look mixed. Because I have two sisters, too. They never get mistaken for anything other than mixed. I, for I don't understand. Y'all all look Latina. <laughs> I to also mention What's that the this has been, like, literally my whole life. When I was born up until like fifth grade I had hair like this it's completely straight then out of nowhere from like middle school until college my hair got super curly it looked like this now my hair still Latina <laughs> girl <laughs> is back to like how it used to be when I was a little girl they say your hair changes every seven years I don't know so I really don't think that it's the hair just like my facial features I feel like she want to look different she want to be different so bad girl you look Latina it's okay embrace it and see it's because all of y'all on Twitter now talking about some next Latino. I see I'm a smack. We need to ban Biddy a taco. Like it's all of y'all. It's all of y'all that got the girls having complexes now. Baby, you look Latina and it's okay. You look Latina and it's okay. I thought you was Latina. I immediately said you was mixed. Girl, mix where? Mix where? A mixed bag of nuts? Mix where? Okay. It's not mm, I was mm, not nah, can't say that for her. Um I said Colombia because you basically yelled me to hurry up. I mean, Colombian, listen, any of them islands that's close to Miami, that's what she looked like. That's what is is given is given Day County, baby. <laughs> it's given Day County and not like I was born here, more like I was shipped there. I'm sorry. Listen, y'all know we all came off the same boat, different socks. I'm just saying, is is given wow. Miami. It's um, given bottle girl. It's given 305, Pitbull. Whenever you felt discouraged in life. What motivated you to keep going? The mirror. Money. I look too good to give up. Okay. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. You look too good to give up. You never give up. You never get discouraged. You're like, look, I look too good. There's people uglier out here that's doing the most. I'm going to get to it. God, I feel that every time. I'll be saying that every day. I'll be like, at least I'm not ugly. Chad, because then a life will really be a struggle. Yo, I'm gonna get them with the ass bow. On my James Brown flow with my ass bow. Uh, tell them meet me in the back door. And they better have my motherfucking cash flow. When I'm chilling out in Houston with the Astro. And they know that I get fired than the acro. Back, they can't see me from the back row. Back, I shut it down with my click though. Clack, I, I know what I don't know. Always playing with some sons, but I don't. She might as well have had to drop that. I mean, that's definitely her 2014. That's definitely her 2014 flow. This Kamala Harris was never meant to actually take office as the next 
president of the United States. What if she was simply put up as a distraction? So while conservatives, while the right is over here waving their victory flags, laughing at her because she is a laughing stock, she's hilarious, uh, but already taking the victory lap, if you will, not understanding that she was put up simply to be a distraction because the real strategy is taking place behind the curtains. Hello. And, and let me explain this to you for just a second. For those <laughs> Hello. That's why, listen, I'm not going to have no sympathy on my page. I'm not. I'm not. Y'all want somebody that's going to cry with y'all and sympathize. Y'all know damn well we ain't doing that over here. Y'all know damn well I consider politics. I mean, politics, politics. We're not doing that over here. I don't understand why everybody's so sad and in the uproar. Bitch, it was only one or two candidates, and y'all know this every four years. I'm not understanding. Did we not prepare to loot? Like, girl, I'm too solution-oriented to be in this funk that everybody else in. I mean, aside from the fact that I already done told y'all what's about to happen, that I feel is about to happen. Aside from that, even if it wasn't, girl, again, y'all be having four years to prepare. And the candidates, it's only one or two choices. Like, I don't understand why we don't ever prepare to lose. This whole doom and gloom, and I'm so sad, I got to take a day off. And Girl, bitch, bye. Life still goes on. I still got a divine mission to do, okay? Because if I keep straggling my feet, the universe is going to feel like I'm taking my sweet-ass time, and I don't really want to be here on Earth and might take me out. Get the fuck out of here. It's other shit going on, baby. Do what you can in the ways that you can, okay? Because y'all be focused <laughs> too much on trying to save the world when it come down to the last 10 seconds of the game for me. That's how I look at it. Like, everybody st suddenly start caring about the word and policies and all of that only around election time. Any other time, ain't nobody saying shit. It's too performative for me. Listen, I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm just saying what the fuck I say. Now, all of a sudden, we care and hashtags and da 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 da, -da. Girl, why, why are we not continuing that energy all four years through? Why we only wait to the big election? What about these smaller elections that motherfuckers be like, y'all, oh, I'm going to block you if you vote with Trump. Bitch, y'all need to be blocking motherfuckers if they not voting in a smaller local government. It's like, because that's where it starts. Don't just worry about the big fish, bitch. Like, worry about your, your, your local towns and whatnot, because those are the same politicians that end up advancing to eventually get to a place to be president. Like, I'm so, I just think about things a little differently. Again, Capricorn rising to me, I'm solution oriented, not problem oriented. So I try to think about it from solution first versus problem first. I can't. Okay. Because I just feel like Americans love to wait till it's a problem and then complain versus how can we avoid the problem altogether? How about that? Or how about we've already been through this problem? Let's make sure we don't go go through it again. But we see time and time again, Americans just don't move like that. Even when it comes to the music industry, it's like you done seen TLC get fucked over. You done seen all of these artists get fucked over out of their money and these bad record deals only to be in 2024. And then you turn around and sign the same 360 motherfucking deal. And then now you want to sit and complain. Ari Lennox, don't nobody care. Don't nobody care, because how many artists was it before you, baby? Now you want to say, oh, you retire, you hate your label. Girl, I don't care. I don't care. It's like we ignore the Yelp reviews, but then want to get mad when shit hit the fan. When it been smelling like shit since we got up in a bit. Girl, I could, I could rant for days. Unpopular opinions, I guess. Okay, so before I have my morning thoughts, I saw this and I had to respond to it. I just want to um, give you guys some context before we get into it. Literally moved to New York City with $40 and a dream, and that is no exaggeration. I am a classic cliche story. My first day there, my dad literally cried as he gave me 40 bucks cash, put me on a bus so that I could go interview for my first job in New York, which was with a major talent agency. That talent agency is still open today. Then I went on to work in casting. From there, I went back to school. Then from there, I got my first job. That's also an incredible story, but I got my first job with Kamora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons um, in the golden age of hip hop. So during most of this nonsense, which is why this story is so fascinating to me. It's why I'm like glued, I think. And I then went on to work with my now ex-husband, um, as a photojournalist paparazzi during the Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan um, era, Britney Spears era, okay? So when I say that I've seen a lot, I have been around a lot, and I... So you're going to get to what you saw? 
Are you going to get to what you saw? Because everybody want to come out. I've seen a lot. I done did this. And, da, 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 and mm, the videotapes. And da, da. So say what the fuck you saw. I don't need the basis. I don't need the, the background. I mean, it helps, but let's let's get to the point. Let's get to the meat and potatoes because we, we tired of hearing the same things, baby. No, a lot. I just choose not to talk about a lot of it. Not that it's all bad. It's Some of it's really incredible, but um, it was a wild time in my life. I say all that to say, um, when I got my first job, it was with a well-known publicist in the PR marketing department. Say Nicole. their name. I was instantly thrusted into the entertainment industry at a very young, um, I might have been 22 at the time. And what I could say, like my first real party that I did was two weeks after I got there, I was handed a notebook with every major celebrity that you'd ever want to know in this notebook and told that I would be helping put together all the invites for Kamorley Simmons' 22nd birthday party. On top of that, I would actually be working the party. And I, and I did. And there is so much that I have to say. But what so stands out the most and what has been like resonating with me since last night is that I had went to my mom's house on the way home. And when I stopped in her house, she I guess she had just got finished watching my TikTok, but wanted to like chat with me about all the Diddy stuff. And she says to me, aren't you, now aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that it never, not that it never worked out because I did have a really great career, but that I never ascended to the place that I wanted to ascend to. And she was like, don't you see, like, maybe God was protecting you the entire time. And my mom wasn't wrong. I would cry all the time because I was watching my friends climb. God, I know God probably was protecting me because I used to say it all the time and I'm serious. I will suck a dick to get to where I'm trying to go. All that. Oh, I got morals and I don't want to be I don't want to be seen as a hoe and my reputation girl, fuck all that. Millions of dollars could fix my reputation. It could fix my ego. It could fix my morals. Fuck out of here. I am not too proud to suck a dick and eat a little ass if it means that I, my whole entire life about to change. Absolutely not. So that's probably why I, I well, I mean, I know why I'm not where I had wanted to be. It was never going to happen for me. Like that, anyways, until after a certain age. <sighs> Baby Capricorn rising, it's, it's just hell. Not until at 32, child. But I'll be as a teenager in a kid, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. In the ladder in entertainment. And for some reason, it just never would happen for me the way it happened for them. And what I mean by that is, is that I never got the major job at the label you know what i mean i had to like i was more of an underdog and i had to fight for a lot of the things that i got when i was in the inter entertainment industry it just did not come easy to me and i didn't understand why i would always be like you know i'm talented i i i, I know my shit. like i would be amazing at any of these firms i'd be amazing at any of these labels and it just would never happen i didn't understand why and now i i do like this has been a major eye-opening for me personally. Like, I understand why. And all I can say is that I'm, I'm grateful. Like, I'm grateful to God. But anyways, I worked for this um, PR, this major PR um, guru. He's still in the PR industry now. I won't go into who he is, but he's he's still a major player in the industry. Do you right go into who somebody and is, girl? He did a lot of things to shape who I am. And I'm not going to give him full credit because a lot of things he did was hurtful along the way, very hurtful, but also it shaped who I am and I understand why I had to go through it to become who I am right now. But there were a couple of things that he did in part on me that never left me. And for that, I will eternally be grateful for him. So the first thing was, he used to tell me, he used to say, when you go to these parties, um, he was like, so the way the industry parties work, like real industry parties, like first of all, most of the time they're during the week, they're never on the weekend. Secondly, you have to be on a guest list to get in, of course. And most of the time it's sponsored by a liquor sponsor of some sort. And so what would happen is, is that um, they would have open bar, always have open bar from like nine to like 12. Okay. So he used to tell me a couple of things. First thing he told me was you're there to work. Okay. You are there to work. You are not there to party. You're there to network. You're there to, you know, get another connection. And then you are taking your behind home. Do not be partying with these people. The second thing he told me was you never get caught with a drink in your hand while taking a picture. It's 
just bad for business. And I do, I still do that to this day. I will not take a picture with a drink in my hand. I won't. The third thing he told me was, and this was probably the key most important thing. He said, you have two drinks when you show up. Two, that's it. You have the first drink to take the edge off of the day. Okay, go ahead and have your first drink. You have the second drink so that you can walk around. And Girl, we don't hear. I thought you were spilling some tea. Girl, all you doing is spilling liquor. Girl, I thought you was going to get into who done fucked who and what you done saw and who chained up in the basement. Like, <laughs> yeah. you were giving us tips on how to be a PR girl. Like, girl. Just have a drink in your hand. That way no one asks you, do you want another drink? For obvious reasons. Think, you know. <laughs> Roofie, drugs, all that stuff. And I still do that to this day. And I go to a party, I have two drinks, that's it. And the second drink is just so I have a drink and no one asks me, can they give me one? Or you want to relate so bad. You have no idea how valuable that, that alone is worth its weight in gold. But then, but then, and this is the most important thing, he said to me when the party, because the, the open bar was always, like I said, from nine to 12. He said, you always leave right before open bar is over get out before open bar is over do not stay and i never forgot it and it's why i never stayed at a party i never got caught up in a party would hear what happened at the parties but i was never there and it was because okay well can we hear what happened at the parties bitch because i thought that's what this was about like see this be my thing y'all real talkative now on tiktok in the age of Risa Tisa, everybody got a story, but don't want to tell what actually happened. It's like <sighs> trying to find a needle in a goddamn haystack. Like, like, girl, either you was there or you wasn't. Because it's given very much like, oh, I know her. That's my sister friend, cousin hairdresser from up across the street who used to be a janitor. And girl, girl, motherfuckers want to be down and so affected and so victimized and so... All of that so bad, bitch. Were you really there? As I took that so seriously, and I would just take this story time seriously. So to see this comment, that says everything. I'm confirming. I'm affirming what you're saying. He used to always tell me, "You get out before midnight. You get out before the open. Whenever that open bar closes, you hit you hit the skids, kid." And like I said, I don't know. There were a lot of protections. Like when I think of back on it, there were a lot of people who were considered now have been implicated that were never that way toward me. And I just don't understand. Oh, God. But I do understand that I had a great grandmother. You know, they, you know that song? I had a, I, I've had a lot of important people who prayed for me probably when I wasn't praying for myself. And, um, like I said, I'm I'm I mean I'm grateful. Lord, you did your big one because it could have went a whole nother way. But yes, you can go. Just get just get out. Girl, get out my face. How about that? That's what you need to do. You need to get out my face with this. This bullshit. Hold on, y'all. I'm laying down. <sighs> y'all getting to real me like TikTok. Okay. Okay, I think that's better. Let's see. Let's go to her page and see if she got anything. Yeah, leave. Okay. Um. Girl, she's just yapping about nothing. About nothing. About nothing. About nothing. Okay. So Girl. Someone said that horse is deep in thought. Who's the horse, baby? Girl, that was three weeks ago. Because it ain't me. There is a 57 page document that has been declassified on the CIA website about the Adam and Eve. And it talks about things like esoteric information, ancient forbidden knowledge, For what? and even catastrophes and how the real Adam and Eve supposedly came about not only does this document claim to know a real story from a biblical story but it goes on to talk about global catastrophic events pole shifts and even and even ancient egyptian magic before i start go get your blankets go get your blankets 
this 57 page document that contains the story of Adam and Eve also talks about them being <sighs> esoteric My God, I guess. And so apparently there's an entire group of people out there who have all been wondering the same exact question their entire lives, but they've never asked anyone because they're afraid that they'd seem absolutely insane if they ever did. What do you see when you close your eyes? Do you just see black and nothingness? See or do you, like me, sometimes see what appears to be fractals, fuzzies, or geometric shapes? For some people, it's more like the Windows Media Player from the 90s. For others, it's more of a sort of static. Well, I finally learned what it's called. It's called a CEV, closed eye visualization. Apparently there are five levels of closed eye visualization. So get in the comments and let me know what you see when you close your eyes, because I wonder if we see the same thing. I if when you close one. your eyes, you see what appears to be static, that's a level one CEV. And apparently people who can see this with their eyes closed can also train themselves to see this with their eyes open. If when you well, close your eyes, you see light or dark flashes, that would be a level two closed eye visualization. You might experience this in color or just in fuzzy shapes. But if yours is more like this one, then that would be level three. If you see patterns that are in motion and in color. If what you see is like the media player, then this is you. Apparently level four and five are the most rare. If you can actually see objects appear and disappear, you can do that, then you're on level four. And level five is the most insane in my opinion. People who have level five closed eye visualizations can override their physical perception of the real world. It's like literally creating another world in your own mind. <laughs> Typically this level can only be entered in the sensory uh, anyway, deprivation tape. What's going on with this algorithm? Them. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cutting board for me. Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, Microsoft. Okay, bye. Why are you standing there and not doing any work? Good. Did y'all miss me on Friday? I hope I, I hope the fuck God she not teaching no teenagers. See, I have this. Let me go ahead and in. Because I don't like people close in age in school. Absolutely not. She better not be looking like that and teaching no teenagers. Because then I'm assuming they fucking. I'm sorry. I, what happened? Maybe I'm not ignorant. I'm, I'm a bit. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't feel like babies need to be teaching babies. If you in your 20s, why are you why are you in there with 16, 17, 18 year old? No. She better be teaching little toddlers, little five year olds walking around. Talk about something you miss me. Bitch, what? How was you cool? I'm about to start charging classroom tax. Who said no? That means if you want to eat, you gotta feed me too. Cause y'all can get out. Could you imagine her saying that to high school students? Hi, Craig. You're like, I'm going to feed you this dick. Like, okay. Wow. You did your work today? Okay. Maybe it is elementary. Today. Yeah, because do you need that? I, I can't keep up. You have a lot of boyfriends. I was homecoming. Homecoming was? I, I hear it. <laughs> I hear a purse. Hey. You locked in with this one? Yes. Ooh, clock that. Hey, the girl, real I don't like this. When they get you to settle down. They are strong ones. You don't like. You don't like to settle down. Three babies in here. Yeah, I don't. I don't like this. I don't like this. So these are clearly at least middle school students. I don't like this. I don't. I know everybody want to be so cool and be the friend friendly teacher. And no, bitch. No, be friendly by being nice. Don't do all of this that in the third. Why are you as my teacher sitting here fraternizing with me over baddies? That's not supposed to be acceptable. That's not supposed to be okay. You were there to fucking teach my kid, not to be my kid's best friend. The fuck? What is wrong with this new generation? What is wrong with Gen Z? It's Gen Z. It is a Gen Z problem. I'm sorry to everybody Gen Z that watched me, but I don't give a fuck. It's a Gen Z problem. Y'all want to be friends with everybody. You want to be friends with your goddamn kids. That's why they think two plus two is green. Want to be friends with the goddamn students. Child, that's why every child that should have been left behind is getting passed through. Like, oh my God, it's just too much. Absolutely not. He posted you. Somebody got my girl to settle down now. Can this not cute. Ooh, that is not cute, yeah. girl. Oh, he made a post about yes. you. I don't think Happy none of this is cute. To my girlfriend, I love you so much. Right, all right. Get the whole time. He don't even know. Ten months to my girlfriend. 
you always been there for me, <laughs> even when I pushed everybody away. You okay. Always stood by my side, and I thank you for that, and I love you so much, babe. <laughs> no. I didn't know you was in a relationship for two and then the caption says, child, a dating pool is trash for everybody at this point. This is inappropriate. I don't even think it's cute. Like, now as an adult, I don't even think it's cute when people look at little boys and be like, oh, he's going to be your heartbreaker. Like, he going he, he gonna to be having all the girls fighting. Him. No, but like, y'all be, y'all be grooming these little niggas to be fuckboys. And then why, wonder why they grow up to actually become fuckboys. Like, stop that. But, like, you're a fucking teacher. And you sitting here talking to your kids about dating? Dating. I'm telling you, it's a Gen Z problem. I don't know, like, what was in the in the, in the the milk? Like, was it lay? Like, I don't understand. Was y'all looking the fucking school buses on the way to school? Like, what's going on? This is not appropriate. It's not appropriate at all. And go through the comments. I bet you everybody eating it up. It's that I can't keep up. You got a lot of boyfriends for me. You don't like to settle down and not you doing the math. My teacher used to say, did y'all miss me too? And they need to be locked up. It's the classroom tax for me. I love her videos. I'm not a weirdo, but I love your voice. Just last month it was. No, you everybody favorite teacher. These be my favorite con. Get the, ugh. Y'all are weird. Weird. Really says you could find some from the no, really. Hey guys. I know so many people are waking up this morning and are horrified at what they see. And yes, <clears throat> it seems horrifying. But here's the thing. <clears throat> For many of you that don't know me, okay, I've had a near-death experience. And ever since I have gotten flashes of things, um, sort of like a an entombment with the other side. Okay. Girl, I don't need a backstory. Let's get to the point. I believe in psychics, girl, right. clearly. And I'm here to say <clears throat> my feeling still, he will not be president. Girl, you late. I said this two days ago. Let's just wait this out, see what happens. Uh -huh. Um, like I said, I am amazingly calm in my gut. Let's go to the comments. <laughs> Take a shot if you see Sloan Bella's name. <clears throat> I'm upset that we have to go through this. Yes. But my gut and something just keeps telling me just wait it out. Just wait it out. So that's what I'm going to do. Also... I didn't really watch too much of the news this morning, but when I just glanced at it and saw him and his family and a bunch of other people standing there, it just came across me as staged and fake. Like there was no energy behind it. There is no energy behind him being present. And this is what I'm talking about. And this is exactly why I keep saying everybody's performing including everybody on Twitter. it's like i can tell who's just dumb and who's just let me not be offensive even though i want to be i can tell who's dumb period next point i can tell that a lot of people are not intuitive and i'm not even talking about psychic or having visions and download i'm not talking about that i can tell who doesn't have a lick of intuition in them at all because nothing about this feels right. Like when I say that it like, like she just said, there's literally no energy behind him being president. Like there's literally not like when I say it was like, Oh, Trump's president and nothing changed at all. That's why I keep saying, I feel like everybody's performing because I'm just like, everything feels weird. Everything feels off. It doesn't seem real, but yet everybody is giving real reactions to fake shit. Like it, ju it's just like y'all doing the most. Y'all doing the most, only for some bullshit to happen, and then in two weeks it's gonna be a completely different response. But it's just like after all that racist shit that y'all done talked, after all them jokes you done made, after all of that anger that you done let out. I <sighs> 
I, I'm just so over this topic. None whatsoever. And if a lot of you who are sensitive, oh no, not nine minutes, bitch. I'm sorry. I got. I'm sorry. We got other shit to do. No. Right. That's what I said, girl. I drove all the way from Toronto to New York to get pineapples in coconut water. And then after I posted that video, I started to get. No. Ah, look at my bottom bitch. Remember my bottom bitch from yesterday? <laughs> Here, let's go through his profile. I know that. I know that booty hairy. I know that bussy here. Look at. Oh, not 333. Go book a reading. Bitch, I already uploaded 12 of them. Technically, like 16, if you count the other ones I did before. I started to upload some money readings tonight, but I said no, too close. Maybe tomorrow. I think tomorrow I'm going to post some money readings because I think I'm going to want to go live. But theolanasouls.com and go check out your love reading if it applies. Shout out to him, though. What he look like? Okay. Now, I need to see what his legs look like so I know if it's ass hairy. Because I love it. I love a hairy ass. Oh, he cute. Oh, his cheeks are hairy. Yeah, he definitely got hairy cheeks. Oh, turn that off. Oh, yeah, his cheeks definitely hairy. I would eat it. It's a flat booty. Flat booties matter. What happened? He cute. He adorable. Aww. He's so gay. Get the fag off the TV. I might be interested in watching. Okay. Oh, not working at Starbucks. What happened to Free Panasonic? He cute though. He's cute. He's cute in a very happy pride type of way. Oh, wait, there go his legs. Let me see. Oh, yeah, his ass definitely hairy. <laughs> Don't ask me. I have a hack. I know. And I love a hairy booty. I, so I would what? Clean up on Al him. Okay. Let me get up off his page though. He cute. <clears throat> but he looked like every other Puerto Rican in New York child. Oh, not the simulation. Here we go. I type a video. Let me go ahead and like that. Girl, you gonna play? Also, if you just got done smoking a large bowl of cereal. No, but bitch, it. that's what I'm in the bar. That's what I'm in the bar when I went to the store. I was so busy trying to get a Jimmy Buff. Okay, I already done put y'all on. Wait, was that on Patreon or on here that I put y'all on to? Uh, damn, I can't change it yet. I'm gonna change it after after she die. But a Jimmy Buff is fuck, fuck. Okay, I'm gonna copy the link. No, because I feel like I gotta show y'all now. Let me show y'all what a Jimmy Buff is. This is Jersey's like official sandwich And it's so good It's so good bitch You literally you take a roll like a Kaiser bowl And then you like you know Don't don't slice it If you slice it I'm gonna slice you Do not slice that shit in half bitch You're not eating no peanut butter and jelly Okay what you wanna do is you wanna take the roll And do you just wanna like put your fingers in it And then like spread that shit apart Like you know how like you open it in some butt cheeks So you can like <laughs> dive in It's like that okay You're not like Tearing the shit apart. You just put your fingers on it and then you, you know, gently just, yeah, yeah, okay. And then you start stuffing it, right? You put the hot dog in or Italian sausage and then you take some potatoes, okay, potato slices. You put them in there and peppers and onions. So the way that you want to cook it is you want to cook it in oil, okay? You want to slice up some potatoes. Y'all, look, you can see how, how thinly sliced it is. You slice up some, some, some potatoes, not like potato chips. No, okay. You want to slice up some potatoes, not too thick, not too thin. You want to put that in some oil, you along with some peppers and onions, bitch. When that shit cook, you put that shit on the bread with the ketchup and the, and the hot dog or the Italian sausage, or you could do a half and half Italian sausage and hot dog with the what? I'm telling you, best sandwich you will ever eat in your motherfucking life. You ain't eating no hot dog no other way. I promise you, this shit is fire. You don't need no cheese. And I'm, listen, I'm, I'm the guest of lover, okay? I love me some good American cheese, but you don't need no cheese. I promise you. Literally, it's so simple. Hot dog or Italian sausage, um, peppers and onions, and potatoes. And if you wonder what it tastes like, it tastes like home fries with a hot dog or Italian sausage. It's so good. It's so fucking good, okay? But let's go back to this girl. If you're trying to sleep right now, 
please don't watch this. Three minutes. Also, if you just got done smoking a large bowl of cereal, please don't watch this. Put it in your saved folders for later when you've got time. Because you're going to need a lot of time to think about stuff. Because this is going to fuck your whole world up. Okay, so we have to be really honest about one thing. We still don't know who we are or how we got here. But science has discovered a lot of... See, this is what I hate. I... Because y'all know I love doing these deep dives like with Antarctica and the ice wall and like all of these different topics. But I hate when I go to the comments and then it's always the same motherfucking assholes who, so does this mean I got to pay taxes? I mean, rent still doing the first. Do I still got to pay rent? Do I still got to pay this mortgage? What about these bills? Shut the f up. It's not funny. It's not funny. And it's literally on every single post like this. It's not funny. And then what also be pissing me off is that Bots are very real, so especially on controversial topics like this, especially with the election, that's why I tell y'all protect y'all energy. There are companies and people who pay bots that pose as real people to specifically go and be on the opposing side. So a lot of times y'all be thinking y'all in the comments arguing with people, bitch, you're arguing with a bot. Literally arguing with a bot. Or the government. Child bizarre stuff about the nature of our reality. For example, time and space isn't real on the quantum level, even though we're experiencing it. We can't locate the human mind. The brain lights up when we think thoughts, but we have no idea where the mind is located. Also, we can't prove that we're actually touching anything, only that our brain is receiving electromagnetic feedback. But the answer is staring us right in the face. In fact, we're talking to it now because who we are and how we got here is artificial intelligence. Well, yeah. We can all admit that whoever created the world is super intelligent. And that's the one thing that AI will become in the future. Only they could create something as complex and amazing and realistic as the virtual world that we're in right now that we're calling. What is she reading off? It's hard to wrap your mind around, but it explains everything, especially time and space. For example, if you put on some spatial computing goggles and you walk around in a forest, can you say you're really there? You just had the experience of being there. Maybe you walked miles. You never went anywhere. It was all an illusion. Speaking of spatial. Girl, you're boring me. Adapt and create technology. This technology eventually developed into AI. The very thing that we're calling the human mind. And we're going to start creating virtual reality experiences that are very realistic. Then we will finally have all of the answers we've been searching a very long time for. That who we were and what reality was, was advanced technology this whole time. An illusion of all illusions to help us understand one thing. The eternal consciousness that exists throughout the universe. The thing that can never be destroyed, can only change form. And we created this experience in order to feel what it is that we truly are. In order to have another way to perceive ourselves. To go on a journey of limited to unlimited. To discover the answer to the greatest question of all. Who am I? The answer, I am. And if you watch this before bed, I warned you. Good night. A moment of silence. Girl, anyways, um, you need to not do TikToks no A more. Moment of silence. Anyways. Once you understand this, manifestation becomes much, much easier than ever before. So the thing that you have to understand about manifestation is you have to understand the process of how your brain works. With Girl, anyways. It's too bad you have to die. Before we found out what ethnicity you are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is very important. Especially because a lot of us are experiencing fear right now. And I am the queen Not me, girl. of demons visiting me when I was young. And ghosts and stuff. But listen Not to me, this. Girl, like I got. Look at Bashar, he channels. I don't believe like everything channelers say, okay? But this tracks and I think it's going to literally change your life, I hope and how you deal with fear because i'm literally going through through this right now and i know if i am some other people must be so lately when i've been sleeping at night i have been so scared almost paralyzed i can't sleep in the dark i cannot get a normal night's sleep i wake up in the middle of the night and i think that something is in my room with me i think that something's gonna take me away now you could think i might there might be demons in my room i might be being abducted but a little known thing is when I was young, I was adopted and 
I almost died during birth and they took me in this room for like three days and I was literally by myself. It was dark, at least in my weird child memory that people don't think is real, but babies have memories in their body, okay? And there would be people kind of stomping around me and I just made this connection and I was in so much fear as a baby. This was like baby trauma that I literally think it manifested to this fear that's coming up now of me thinking people are going to take me and people are in my room because number one, I was adopted. And number two, I was in this room without my birth mom, scared for my life. So that does not take away from the fact that I had very real experiences with ghosts. Yeah, y'all are boring me. My partner's idea. Okay, so we are now going to announce the October employee of the month. This employee will what get five thousand dollars, and they will have a week at the Four Seasons Hotel. Okay, so we're going to read off who that employee is. Okay, so the employee of the month goes. To <laughs> Lindsay, uh, Lindsay, before you uh, read off who won the award, which is going to be me, before you read off the award, I like to give a speech. I like to well, give a speech. Actually, uh, I'm sorry, you're cute. not the employee of the month. Rhonda is. Rhonda, are you? Rhonda. Oh, I'm here. Hi. Oh, oh, oh Rhonda, Rhonda, I, 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 Rhonda. Oh, oh, bitch. While I'm talking, we quiet. No. Okay, Rhonda. I think Lindsay read the wrong motherfucking name. I think <laughs> no, I, I, I'm the. My name is on the paper. Rhonda, my Rhonda. Name is on Your the name paper. gonna be on another piece of paper. Okay, bitch. It's called an autopsy <laughs> report. Okay, bitch. It's called an obituary. Obituary. Oh, fuck up while I'm talking. Okay, ho. So calm down, bitch. Let me figure this out, Lindsay. I think you read the wrong motherfucking name. You should have said fuck to the motherfucking Leisha. My name should have been on that motherfucking paper, bitch. Okay, you giving away five thousand dollars in a week at the Four Seasons Hotel. I don't hotel. know what okay, you don't you... understand. Rhonda won the hotel Four Seasons. Okay, well, 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 Lindsay, hotel. if I don't get the employee of the motherfucking month, your family and you won't even live to see Four Seasons, bitch. Okay, and, <laughs> and I don't give a damn. You don't show up to work on time. You show up late. You're not nice. You're disrespectful. You don't even show up. So what do you? I, it don't matter if I show up to work on time, bitch. I still show up. Okay, I don't give a fuck if I'm an hour late, two hours was late and i don't give a fuck if i didn't come into work at all because i didn't feel like it bitch i show up when i have to okay bitch so what's gonna happen is you're gonna write that five thousand dollar check out in my motherfucking name okay bitch or uh oh or i'm gonna have a five thousand dollar bill okay i'm gonna have a five thousand dollar bill because i didn't put my motherfucking hands on you bitch so we can go either Listen, motherfucking way uh, felicia go. it's going to Rhonda. you did not get it this month well, okay well, maybe well, next well, month well, maybe well Rhonda, either i can be the employee of the month or i can be the employee in jail this month okay bitch you don't <laughs> it, i don't i like it both options i like both ways but Rhonda, i promise you bitch you're not getting five thousand dollars you damn sure ain't going to the four seasons hotel bitch that's where i belong okay bitch i'm i'm an employee <laughs> I'm a, I'm, so do what you gotta do listen the employees do you not see everybody else your co-workers looking at you crazy right now i don't give you a fuck about you at... let me go ahead and tell y'all something okay i don't give a fuck about you bitches and how you feel okay bitch if you feel some type of way i got a pistol that can make you feel real motherfucking good you got you bitches got it you got you got anybody got something to say anybody Okay, Lindsay. Now back to your motherfucking ass. Write that check out, bitch. I okay, right? I'm not writing anything out for you. You need okay, to. Okay, that, that's, that's fine. Lindsay, that is motherfucking fine. Just know you about to stop breathing. That's fine. That's fine. Because, bitch, I, I've been doing real motherfucking good this month. I've been doing real. I, I tried to be here on time. I tried to be you know, polite. Okay. But now my pistol got to be polite. That's okay. That's okay. Everyone get back to work. Everyone yeah, y'all can go to back to work. Y'all can go back to work. Lindsay and Rhonda, Rhonda ain't gonna be, they're not gonna return back to work. Go back to work. It's fine. It's fine. You bitches is going, going down. You bitches going down today. Just like my motherfucking award going down. Uh-huh. Lindsay, step out back. Step, no, step out back. <laughs> and then it's the one one one. Okay. So Zealotandsouls.com. Go book your reading, bitch. Okay. Excuse me. Uh-uh. Cut that shit off. People don't realize this, but if you think about somebody a lot and you have a lot of anger or hatred or jealousy or obsession towards that person, then you're actually sending them your energy. And that energy is like flavored with those emotions. And similarly, if you think about somebody with a lot of love or compassion in your heart, you're still sending them your energy. It's just flavored with love and compassion. And if the person you're thinking about is psychic or an empath, then they definitely feel that energy coming through. I know you do. Taste what the flavor is. Oh, depending how psychic I want to taste. They probably have a pretty good idea, or maybe even know exactly who that energy is coming. He from. do, and that's the fucking problem now. God is calling for all divine feminines to be hey. them. Stop the people pleasing. Stop the going by just to get by. Stop Girl, I tried to tell them four years ago. No, they're not your company. They're not your type of people. Stop staying at that job because you don't want to hear somebody's mouth. 
because you don't want your parents to have something to say. They don't want to listen to me, girl. I I I tell y'all hoes every reading, get on your shit before shit gets on you. The girls don't want to listen to me though. Stop putting up with people bullshit because you don't like confrontation. Stop shape shifting and changing who you are just to fit in and be liked around other people. Stop expressing your love language when people are not reciprocating that energy. Stop taking advice from people when you should know what's best for you. Ooh. Stop living your life based off the way other people are living their life. Right. Stop believing that. How you gonna give me directions to some place you ain't never even been? That's my motto. How the fuck you gonna give me directions to a place you ain't never been? Clock that tea and tell me how it tastes. Success for you is going to look the same as success for somebody else. This is all about self-limited beliefs. God is calling for all of this shit to be dismantled, okay? Divine feminists, it's time to step up. I've been said that. Turn that off. You are in a spiritual warfare right now, and God is calling for you to take a break from everything. Girl, he ain't say that. Pros yeah, and cons of different jobs that allow you to travel the world. You know the best way to stop depression? Yeah, <laughs> President Trump. Your ass off. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, you don't have time. You want to work so hard that you don't have time for depression. I mean, spoken like a listen, spoken like a capitalistic billionaire. I'm from Trinidad, the beautiful island of St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm from Nigeria. I'm from New York City. I'm from Harlem. Um, I chose that ghost because I've been hearing about it all over Instagram and TikTok. I've seen plenty of people come, so I wanted to come and try out some food and the vibe. I chose Lagos because I heard that the environment is fun and I wanted to experience it for myself. I came here. Right no shade. Every time I go in there, it look ghetto. But um, I'm. You want me to be honest? This my channel is not. Um, because I used to pick up orders from here when I used to do Uber Eats. Thank God I'm not doing that more, no more. Oh my God. I pray for times like this. But even though I do miss doing it because it was fun. I, what? Me zooming through the streets on a bike and I look good. And cars used to be honking at me. Listen. <laughs> okay, bitch. Look, y'all get cat called. I get car called. What are you talking about? What? Y'all get cat called. I get car called. Okay. Listen, you ain't never been that bitch until you walking in the street and you got cars stopping in the middle of the street. To try to get your attention. That's holding up traffic. Okay. To try to get your attention. What fuck is you talking about? Y'all get cat called. I get car called. We are not the same. Friend and I, because I saw it on TikTok. And I want the suya, the vibes, and the music. They definitely got that. First of all, the food was absolutely delicious. Amazing. I heard it's good. Spectacular. And the service was outstanding. I don't know about all that. <laughs> yeah. I told her she need to call this the Latasha challenge. Because <laughs> Latosha is the only one. Okay. Latosha Sally from SWV. She oh. Not SWV from Escape. She the only one who she girl. She be running and running and running like it's a month of marathon. And it's like, girl, can we finish the sentence in the song? <laughs> like she be, be she will run everything. Oh, say can you see? Like Latosha, Latosha. I know that's right. Oh, 
making me miss my 90s bops album i was just thinking about that well not about that project but i was thinking about my music center i was just like i am so ready to set to down y'all don't understand i i need my own shit that's why i need this youtube to kick up i need it to kick up that's why i gotta do more than baddies like i can't this check the check shit it's just it's just not it's just it, it's just not <sighs> And then rent is like, oh my god, like I missed twenty nineteen when rent was like sixteen hundred dollars. Rent is like four thousand dollars for a studio. Like it's just too much. That's why I need all y'all bitches who be paying two hundred dollars for rent to shut the fuck up. Shut up. Read the goddamn room. Y'all in places in in Tiskawaka boo boo paying <laughs> to paying five hundred goddamn dollars and complain about it. Like shut the shut up. Shut up. Some of us don't have a choice but to pay 5000 to live in a goddamn shoe box. And y'all in places playing what? Incredible fucking money for rent and still complaining. Like, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. And then everybody want to complain about wages and shit like that. It's just like, bitch, the $18 where you at can go a lot further than the $18 where I'm at and I still got to pay 5000 for rent. Like, oh, oh. Oh, oh, a lot of what people complain about. I just, oh, that's why I don't get involved because I'd be like, Sky, can we get an unpopular opinions video? Girl, my whole channel, my whole life is an unpopular opinion because a lot of the shit that be going on in society, I don't subscribe to. Everybody complaining about minimum wage. Your minimum wage is not my minimum wage. The fact that we getting paid the same amount of dollars, but yet my rent, it's 10 times your rent, girl. Shut get out my face. Get the fuck out my face. And then motherfuckers got the nerve to be like, I don't want to work. I wish I had a work from home job. And then you get a work from home job, and then you go on TikTok and tell every goddamn thing. Okay. And then now they start cracking down on everybody who work from home and then don't want to give those jobs out because y'all talking too goddamn much on TikTok. Like it, it girl, I can rent all day. Well, we should sit here for Wiggins, mm-hmm, figures. Wiggins is a cute hair company. I just got the wrong wig. I listen. I'm never getting kinky curly wigs again. Every single time I've had them, y'all know I used to be a beauty influencer back in 2016 and 2017. Every kinky curly wig I've ever gotten, girl, them shit shed like my crazy. I don't know what it is when it comes to the 4A, 4B, 4C textures. Absolutely not. They be doing it so wrong. Doing us so wrong. But I'm never getting that tech shit ever again in a wig. Because they always shed. Always. So my little Wiggins wig, I still got it. If I want like a cute little human hair moment behind a bandana. <laughs> behind a bandana. <laughs> okay, like if I'm laying down in bed with a sneaky link. Okay, and I want it to feel real. You know, I might throw it on, my, you know, underneath a little bonnet. Okay, let my hair breathe a little underneath a bonnet. Okay, but mm -mm. wearing that shit outside, absolutely not. But I would order from Wiggins again. I would. I would just have to like order directly from them, so I could tell them, um, can you make the cap size bigger? Because it ain't no reason why I need to be reconstructing this wig. Like I'm still a motherfucking beauty guru. Why? What? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? That's cute too. I love me some Pocahontas type here. See, I be looking real good with the, with the with the what with the three textures. Okay, give me a three texture any day, a two texture or a three texture. What? Okay, three A, three B, three C, two A, two B, C, two C. Girl, all that, all that. That Pocahontas beat mm, on me. Children, and I have a cat, and I will be watching with my Zoom camera. And my bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Girl, it. <laughs> Thank you. Nah, just regular video. Thank you. Appreciate it. You guys yeah. Have you ever craved something late at night? And Girl, get out my face. I hate when people be. Shut up. I hate when people get up here and start whispering. Is the universe recycling NPCs in this woman's reality? It all began when I moved out on my own for the first time to a fairly large city. It wasn't uncommon to see a lot of the same homeless people every day wandering around, especially on regularly commuted routes. However, since the first day of dropping my son off at his new school, I noticed something odd. 
I repeatedly saw the same woman who looked well-dressed but always wore the same black shirt slash pants combo. She didn't appear homeless. She always had one of those mobile folding carts, similar to a suitcase, and carried two to three bags on her. Her walk was very distinct. She sort of shuffled along, always with a blank expression, staring straight ahead forward and never acknowledged traffic or anything around her. At first, I just figured this was her daily walk to work, even though there was no office buildings nearby or within a reasonable walking distance, but I didn't think too much about it. What became odd to me was no matter how slightly late or slightly early I was to drop off, she was always there at the exact same time as me, always with the same outfit, always the same weird shuffle and blank stare and always with her luggage and bags. Okay, so far, not so weird, right? Maybe it's just like a teacher or somebody that works in a school and they happen to just wear the same exact outfit every day and they also carry the same amount of stuff every day and they're not in a good mood every morning, who knows? About a year later, I moved to a different part of the city and I would randomly see her shuffling around. I found it odd, her clothing, luggage, and the odd body language literally never varied. But again, living in a large city, it wasn't unusual to see strange things. That is, until I had to move back to my hometown for health reasons. One day, before dropping my son off at his new school, we were a bit early, so we decided to drive down the road to get coffee. I was on one of the busy main roads and happened to glance over to my right. There she was again. I almost missed our turn and caused an accident. I was so shocked. I even pointed and shouted loudly, there she is again. He was initially confused until I explained to him what I had seen. He reassured me that he saw the same woman that I was seeing. Okay, so at least it's not in your head. And guess what? Same black outfit, exact same luggage and blank expression. Unfortunately, since we were on a busy road, we couldn't stop to watch and see where she went. But when we were driving back the other way, we couldn't see where she had gone to. In this area, there really wasn't anywhere to go, and it was like as if she just glitched out. I haven't seen her since, but I honestly can't explain the strangeness of her presence, especially showing up in my hometown after I moved. Something about her body language, the lack of variety in her appearance, and the way she seems to randomly show up everywhere I go gives me an uncanny feeling. Do you have any ideas or has anyone else experienced this? Okay, so my first thought was that she was obviously an NPC. If you guys don't know what an NPC is, NPC stands for non-playable character or non-player character. It's like when you play a video game and it's those characters in the game that are just like doing the same thing over and over again. They have like a preset um, recorded set of lines. They look exactly the same. Like those are NPCs. So some people think we are living in like literally a simulation and we have NPCs around us in our realities. And she sounded like an NPC in the beginning, same clothes, like doing the same thing. There's been so many people that have said that they've had these experiences of seeing the same exact person doing the same exact thing every day, not in a, okay, that person is in a routine kind of way, like in a weird way. The fact that you saw her when you moved in the town, like to another part of town was weird, but the fact that she followed you to your hometown when you moved was even weirder. Is she just like one of the Cause now I'm like, that could be, could be like somebody on her team. Could be like a, somebody, you know, like, like a spirit guy, an angel on her team. NPCs in your reality yep, yep. and they're recycling it no matter where you are thinking you won't notice, but you've noticed. Or is she not an NPC at all? And she's actually some kind of like guardian or guide or someone right. watching over you. Mm -hmm. That's why you see here weird places. The thing that's throwing me off is the fact that she has such like an expressionless face like, that's kind of weird. The expression right. of face says NPC and, to me, but the fact that she's followed you says maybe a guardian? Right. That's exactly that's exactly what I said. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and let me know. What if about, it's a, what if it's a guy or someone just watching over her? And then when she called it out, the lady has never seen again. Right. The fact that the lady has never seen again, that is also what makes me feel like it could be um, a guardian. Because guiding an agent do move like that. I think she's seeing herself in the future. I don't know what happens in her life, but maybe her future self is somehow trying to warn her. Mm, another timeline. I experienced this, but it wasn't just me. Some sort of guy, blink expression, checks out if the guy isn't meant to interact. When you acknowledge and notice NPC, they definitely fade out. I've had this experience with a man who never aged and was always a painter. The first time I saw him, I was late teens. Last time I was in my late 40s. Huh. Hmm.
<sighs> right. If, if you have any NPCs in your neighborhood. Are y'all going to be mad at me if I say that if I was a man and I cheated. Bitch, I didn't even realize we was over the hour mark. I did not realize we was already over the hour mark. My girlfriend, and instead of leaving me, she went and fought the girl that I cheated on her with. I would literally cheat 10 times harder. I'm sorry, I would, because you want me so bad that instead of being mad at me, you somehow found a way to redirect this anger onto a girl you don't even know. You're willing to put your life and your freedom in jeopardy just to keep me keep me around. I'm flattered, <laughs> but I'm also disgusted because like, why would you want that? I don't know. I just like it would really it would fuel me. It would really fuel me. Like that would put a battery in my back. I I would be the energizer bunny of cheating because like now I want to see how far you're gonna go. Like I I want to see what what all you gonna do. Like how much can I really get away with? If I can do this, what else can I do? Right. And if I'm thinking like this as a woman, I know, I I know that some men out there, I know that this is how they have to feel. There's no way. This couldn't be an original thought. Like, it would just give me such an ego boost. And I, that would give me a high like nothing else. And I would spend the rest of this relationship chasing that high. I want to see how far you're going to go for me. Let's find out. This person had a near-death experience, but when she came back, her experience of the situation was different than someone else's experience of the situation who was very close to her, which is very interesting to me. I've actually heard of this happening before. I do not know the reason behind it. Watch. Let me know what you guys think. She's tagged below, by the way. How does one person have a near-death experience and two people experience it in two different ways? Let's set the scene. It was my third pregnancy. I had already had two C-sections. This pregnancy, I wanted to try to have a vaginal birth, which is called a VBAC. They're very risky because you had already been cut open twice. They run the risk of you rupturing and you and the baby losing too much blood and dying. If you do rupture, there's a 16-minute window before there is mortality. Oh! Now, when I'm laboring, I'm feeling something is off. I tell the doctor, I know things look like they're going great, but I have a feeling something is wrong. They're like, no, everything's great. We're looking at your monitors, da 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 I'm like, no, I just feel like something is really wrong. I think you guys should take me to the OR now. They're like, no, we would know if something was wrong. Oh, they're no. I would have had to smack every bitch up in that room. Bitch, I said. Okay, I would have turned into a motherfucking t I don't want to. Because I'm real mindful of the words that I say, but I would turn into something, okay? Because, mm -mm, mm -mm. bitch, how you gonna tell me what I'm feeling? Am I, I don't give a fuck what it say on that monitor? How this shit don't feel right to me? Come unhook me off this shit. Whatever. Thank goodness they switched shifts and another doctor came on. It was a black lady with locks. Thank goodness for her because she came in. And she said. They keep saying that you want to go to the OR. Why is that? I said, because I have a feeling that's well, I feel like that was her guardian angel. To go now. We go down there and guess what? I am ruptured. She says that within like me being on a table for 20 seconds. Now, when you have a C section, they give you oxygen. Why you would think I'm awake, I should be able to breathe. No, you need the oxygen. I was not getting enough oxygen, and I slowly felt myself slipping away. Now let me tell you, do not ever have a fear of death because uh -uh. I used to be so afraid of death prior to this Don't be. because I started dying and I saw what it felt like. It is almost feels so amazing and peaceful that it's hard to resist. But I knew that I needed to be here. But like I had to talk myself back up to get the strength and energy to tap my husband and let him know that something is wrong. I need, I, I was just like, like that was the last breath I had in me to be able to get it out. And he's like, she needs oxygen. And they're like, she needs oxygen. Oh my gosh, her numbers are so low. Da, 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 da. But I was like sinking into the death. This video is not sponsored by the Grim Reaper. And I do not recommend <laughs> anyone try to go for it before it's your time. Uh -uh. Here's where the story gets juicy. Girl, it already I is almost dying in labor like during the birth of my son my mom's like yeah i was so scared because when your husband came out the room and he was crying and he was telling us that 
you were dying and they were in there giving you a blood transfusion right then. That was the scariest day of my life. And I said, I didn't have to have a, a blood transfusion. And she's like, yes, she did. And I remember distinctly, it was me. And she's same the people who were in the waiting room, which were the people that were in the waiting room. And she's like, and he came out and I had to hold him because he was, sh he was so scared. And I'm like, my, like he was there with me the whole time. He never left. So now I have to call him and find out. And I'm like, hey, did I have to have a blood transfusion? He's like, no, you didn't have to have a blood transfusion. I was like, well, my mom said that you came out and told <laughs> her that I was in there getting a blood transfusion. He's like, I never left your side, which I know he never left my side. And yes, I almost died. But we didn't tell my mom that because I would never tell my mom that she is like, already paranoid and scared of something happening to one of her kids anyways so now the question is all of you people who have all the answers because it's a ton of you all how is it that in my near-death experience there were like two different experiences from different people when in reality i did like come this close girl your mother just up there close in age close to death so then I even looked up the paperwork from the hospital where it said that not only did I have a rupture, the rupture extended over to a major artery to which I lost a substantial amount of blood. But then also on there, it has a part where it says needed a blood transfusion. No. So riddle me this. Booking.com can't Girl, guarantee no. This person. You died in one timeline and woke up in another timeline. The black doctor with the locks was the angel that made it happen for you to jump reality. What the fuck? Theolotasouls.com. Go book your reading because that's what I said. That's exactly what I said. Because what doctor leaves in the middle of delivering a baby? Right. Right. Look at the time. Gotta go. Has to be more, especially if she remembers black lady with locks. Right. I thought the same thing. Like, I've never heard of the doctor leaving mid delivery. There was a reason, and I believe it was so the second doctor could save her. Right. You heard that theory that we never die. We just get deposited into another universe. So many of these stories line up with that. Quantum immortality event. Mm. Mom's reality shifted to a better outcome, but trauma remembered the first. Mm. Okay. It's the mom mixing up memories. I want to go through one more. See, we could do a whole a whole series with her. I know that they, and it is two two two, two two two. Okay, we could honestly do a whole like sub like video of like just her page. We really, really, we really could. And don't be surprised. That's probably what TikTok um roulette is going to turn into. Cause I mean, it's still going to be like the funny like memes and shit that pop up and the funny little videos that pop up or whatever. But like, this is the shit that I be watching, like I said, on my own. So, you know, I'm going to definitely favorite her page so that we could just start going through her shit because she be having mad stories. Like, let's just go through one popular right here let's read some glitch in the matrix stories part 24 this one gave me the chills a few years ago i was nine months pregnant two days past my due date when i went into labor we got to the hospital and i labored for hours and hours they didn't realize the baby was breached and sadly from lack of oxygen my baby was still born i'm so sorry I was heartbroken and they wheeled me off to the recovery ward while my fiance held my baby boy. The next day I woke up back in my own bed at home. I was still pregnant. It was the same day I went into labor. I turned to my fiance and said, what happened? How am I back here? And was crying saying we've lost the baby. He calmed me down and said, I must have had a nightmare and that I hadn't went into labor yet. I was so confused, looked at my hands and it was still bruised from where my IV went in. I was very freaked out. I knew it wasn't a dream. It was too real. I went into labor again. When I arrived at the hospital, I begged and pleaded with the staff to scan me. They did. My baby was breached. They tried to turn him, but it didn't work. I was rushed off for an emergency C-section and had a healthy baby boy. I just knew someone or something had stopped the heartbreak. My son is nearly three. And the other day he turned to me randomly and said, mom, do you remember when I died in your belly? What? 
My heart sank. I questioned him again, but he didn't say any more. By far the strangest thing that has ever happened to me. Girl. Girl. Let's read some Lucian and Matrix stories. And this is where we're going to end it. This will right. And then I said that at 114.44, of course. Girl, I didn't realize it was already an hour and 14 minutes. Okay. But yeah. Um, next time I do this, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to guide the algorithm a little bit better. We might even just start on her page. Um, because I do want to start getting more into like the 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 stories like I don't even want to call it spooky stories, but like, you know, like the real shit, the real shit, the gl glitches in the matrix and, you know, all of that jumping timelines and all of that. Y'all know I love that shit. So yeah, let me know what y'all thought about all of this Damn, in the comment box below and go book a reading and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,